Get connected with Take Two Radio Music on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio Music. Or for email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take Two Radio Music.com. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Take Two Radio Music. I'm Pam, your host. Happy Wednesday, one and all. I hope your day is going well so far. Uh, weather update in Chicago, like I usually like to do, it's uh, dreary and cold, yuck. But I am so very happy that I'll be able to speak with my guest today, uh, who is a country artist, and his name is Marshall Dane. And I do believe that we have him on the phone, so let me go ahead and pick this up. Marshall, are you with me? That would be me right there, Yay. just under the wire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, better late than never, as they say. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so how are things with you today? Everything's great today. Um, I uh, just kind of got back into town. I was out of town uh, for another five days. I'm like globetrotting this last 60 days. And um, I had a good night's sleep. I got to perform last night in my hometown. And... Yeah, I'm getting a lot of work done today, so it's a good day, although although I think I overheard you say it's a little dreary where you're at, and it's a, a little dreary and cloudy where I'm at, too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting to be that time of year that I can't stand. Um, uh, yeah. I'm a warm weather, right. sunshine type of person, and when you wake up and you look outside and, you know, there's no sun and it's cold, and it's just like, then you kind of feel blah until you get yourself into a better mood by doing something else, like speaking with a guest today. <laughs> hey, well, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining me. And by the way, I brought the chips. Did you bring the alcohol? <laughs> oh, not wine. Just yeah, no. <laughs> Literally. Well, I, I always like to somewhere. go. Yeah. It, well, as they always say, it's five o'clock somewhere, though, right? That's right. <laughs> well, I always like to have our guests go back a little bit and tell us about you know, when they became interested in being in music. So what did it for you? You know, I think the very, I mean, well, the very first memory of me deciding I I need to learn how to play, like, the guitar specifically, I was 12. Um, like, I'd already learned how to play the piano as a kid, but, like, not really learned. I kind of just tinkered at the piano. My mother taught piano, so we had a piano, and, I'd show a bit of interest, but I started showing more interest once I started getting into the guitar. Uh, and, and that was the reason I wanted to get, uh, wanted to learn was because my family all played. Everybody, my grandmother, my brothers, my sister, or I guess my sisters at the time, um, my cousins, my nephews, everybody, uh, my uncles, wow. my aunt, dad. So <laughs> when we got together, if you didn't play music, and or dance, and I wasn't dancing at 12 years old, that's for sure. Uh, well, at least not me. Um, but, you know, my sister danced, and she, you know, played the piano, so she fit in both ways. And so I guess for me it was the one time that I really wanted to join in, and I couldn't play my soccer ball in the room where everybody was playing music and, yeah. and you know, doing their dancing. So uh, I got kicked outside, and I remember looking through the window, and it's, it's really Aww. a sad picture. You're looking through, and all the family's yeah. inside. I'm outside by myself thinking, well, this is no fun at all. The soccer ball doesn't do me. I can't do anything with it now. So yeah. I, uh, that same day I asked my dad. I put the ball away. I went upstairs. I sat there and listened to the music and then asked my dad, can you please teach me how to play guitar? And he taught me a G, a C, or a G7, a C, and an F chord. And the rest is, as they say, history. Yeah. And that was enough to get you back into the family business. So that was a good thing. I, I could just yeah. picture you That's standing all I really outside. Wanted. That was my first inspiration to say, okay, i got to learn how to play one of these instruments <laughs> if I'm going to go have fun with everybody. Right. Well, I take it after a time it wasn't like a mandatory thing. You just fell in love with it and continued on from there. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'm, I mean, I obviously, I, you know, had already knew the piano. Then I started to love the guitar. And then I started putting them both together. One of my first little purchases were, you know, a little electric guitar and a little recording unit so I could start recording songs and, mm -hmm. you know, 
Yeah, so well, I, I did. did. I thought I was you could really sing. quick. By 15, I was already playing a little gig at a, cop, a little coffee house every Friday oh, and wow. Saturday night by myself. Wow. No stage just fright? Songs and just singing songs and that's it, playing guitar. Any stage fright at that age, being by yourself? No, I grew up in a, a very strong, strong uh, Christian family that uh, – made sure that I got up on that pulpit at least three times a week ah, to practice my sermons okay. and to sit in front, to stand in front of the congregation and, and give little uh, talks and little sermons and stuff. And so uh, it was getting on stage to play music for the first time wasn't that nerve-wracking. Only knowing 13 songs and having to do three sets, and it was a coffee shop, I thought it only takes about maybe four minutes to drink a coffee. Yeah. So these people will be in, and then they'll be out, and I'll have I can play my 13 songs again in the second set. Well, people right. stayed, and next thing you know, I was like, okay, I got to change the order, but play the same songs, and I better change up how I play them each time, so it doesn't sound exactly the same. Yeah. And yeah, you got to learn quick when you're out there. But right, yeah, I was right. I was never really afraid of being in, uh, on stage playing music because before that I was always doing it, you know, on stage at the church. Right. They prepared you for it. You know, you get prepared in life in many ways that you don't even realize, and, and there's one right there for you. Oh, straight up. I mean, that's a whole story <laughs> unto itself. Yeah. <laughs> now, so when did you um, figure out that you could sing, or did you end up taking classes for that? You know, I didn't even know now if I can sing. I mean, I sing. Oh, how how good I'm doing it, but uh, you know, again, it was just something we did, and I mean, it wasn't encouraged in church to sing harmonies, but you'd be hard pressed to find me and my three older sisters, like almost next to silently whispering to each other the harmony lines, so that we wouldn't get in trouble, but we could hear the oh. cool harmonies. Because as kids, <laughs> we'd drive around, we'd do that Sunday drive in my dad's, you know, big old green Buick, and um, you know, we'd sing in rounds, you know, Land of the Silver Birch, Home of the Beaver, all that kind of stuff, or, or mm-hmm. you know, Butter, Butter, Going Down the Gutter in the Store. I don't know, campfire songs kind of thing. <laughs> school kid campfire songs. Like, or at least Canadian school kid campfire songs. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, we were just always singing. And, it, again, it was just a natural transition for me to say, well, I, I can play some songs. I want to go sing them. I just got offered to sing at this little cafe. Let me do that. That's cool. Now, it didn't take long for me to get, you know, the elders in the congregation pulling me aside and saying, hey, wait a second, you don't want to be choosing this path. You're supposed to be a preacher like your daddy. <laughs> ah, but preachers can sing and play music. Well, well we yeah, we figured that out. Yeah. Again, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, so the same I... part, I mean, I didn't take lessons. I just always have sung, and I'm a, probably a bit of a perfectionist, you know, when it comes mm-hmm. to trying to pay attention to the things that I enjoy about the craft and, uh, you know, singing, guitar, writing, and, you know, I just always try and pick up from other people that have got the training. I basically steal some of their mojo, borrow it, and then filter it into my own way of trying to sing better and or control my voice a little better. Yeah, yeah. You you always learn along the way, you know, something new or, you know, by listening to somebody else, like you say, and and take it from there. But I think you do a mighty fine job. I absolutely love your music, and I know that you have many fans out there that love it as well. So you're doing the right thing. And as long mm-hmm. as it feels good to you, that's what's something that you should continue to do. Yeah, no, definitely. It feels great. Thank you. Now, I've often wondered, do singers, musicians, bands, whatever, <laughs> choose their style of music or does music choose them, you know, like a genre? How did you choose yours? The music always chooses, I believe, the music always chooses its artists. And by that, mm-hmm. even if an artist says, you know what, I'm going to choose to do this. I want to do some, you know, uh, uh, what was that funky tune that came out this past summer that was crazy? Oh, I was a, uh, it was a Filipino dude that did it. Anyways, it was a oh, that yeah. weird dance song. Oh, yeah, I know song. what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I Another one. Anyways, I can't remember what it's called, but that weird dance song. Like, you know, you almost think, 
you just go out as far left field as you possibly could and just see how that would roll? <laughs> and you're laughing at us because you're like, wow, they just ate that up. But that's cool. Because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's very creative. It's very, you, you know, even if you put out the most simplest of song, if the people are eating it up, well, I mean, if they're enjoying it, that's what you were kind of doing it for anyways. So Exactly. So, yeah, so no matter which way it comes out, whether you're deciding, you know, which genre you would love to be in or what genre you think you could uh, fulfill your musical outlet the most in, and or if it just kind of, if it picks you because you're born and raised in a certain spot and that's just kind of where it's at, then mm-hmm. that's that's beautiful. It's all beautiful. It's all the it's all the way that music ends up choosing you, anyways. Uh, just like it chooses its listeners, and myself, if you're you know, myself, it would be. I've always just kept my head down, never even thought of a genre of music. It didn't even, I remember one time going to a girl here in Canada who was uh, had something to do with when Britney Spears was just starting out. So I knew she was a somebody doing something. And mm-hmm. she's, you know, still today in the business. And she gave me the feedback saying, I don't get it. Your four songs all sound different, like different styles. And I'm right. like, well, I write different styles. I think different things. Why can't I? Is that wrong? <laughs> and it, it, so it just didn't make sense to me that it had to be one thing. So over the years, it finally came down to, oh, I have to look. I was going to look to see what the radio world was like. And it just, I thought, where does a guy go that does exactly what I do? And I thought, I think that guy goes to Nashville. And then as soon as I took one step in the Canadian Country Music uh, Awards back in 2008, before I made my trip to Nashville, it wasn't even five minutes I was there, and I thought, here is where I sit. This is Aww. my thing. You know, if there's, I didn't know, I didn't sign. bother thinking about it. It wasn't in my consciousness to care about what genre I sung. Mm-hmm. I just did what I did. I had a right. sax player sometimes. I had a fiddle player sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just that's how it was. So, right. But, yeah, so and, in the end, I mean, in my case, it was kind of, it just worked out, and it, we met at the same time, you know, the decision that, oh, this is the radio stations. Because it was really just a matter of what radio stations do I send the music I write to. And I thought, well, I don't know. Yeah. Is, it, is it the big, you know, pop station? Because I think my stuff sometimes sounds that way. Or is it the country stations? It sometimes sounds that way. But sometimes it's a little Bon Jovi-ish, so does that go on what station? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what do you do? You live in a shoe. Yeah. Well, I think that these days, you know, being put into a certain genre is is not that important anymore because so many songs cross over to the different genres. Country goes into rock or rock goes into pop, you know, or pop goes into hip hop. So it just all depends, I think, on the song, where you want to put it, where your fans welcome it. Yeah. That's totally it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good thing because you make more fans of your music in the different genres that way and uh, get more people singing that song along with you when you're at live in concert. Mm-hmm. That's a cool, cool feeling. It is. <laughs> oh, that's a cool, cool feeling. Sometimes you don't even see it, but then you're the guys in the band because they're paying attention. I'm just doing whatever I'm doing at the front, and they're like, boy, man, did you see them singing along to that? I was like, well, Aww. you know, sometimes you catch it, but other times, you know, you're, you're kind of in the moment, and uh, it's right, nice, though. Right, right. I know right. the boys notice it. Yeah, well, I know that when I'm at concerts and we're singing along to the songs, it's always neat when when the uh, singer will throw out the microphone, you know, and, and have you sing out loud so everybody can hear it. I, and so yeah. we we enjoy that as well. And, you know, you guys, yeah. we all work together. We feed off each other's energies. Yeah, that's it. Give the concert that you want to be at. Yes, exactly. Now, I want to mention your first album, Running Stop Signs, was released in 2010 and was quite successful with two nominations at the 2013 Country Music Association of Ontario Awards. And Mm -hmm. that's not bad for a first album. What was it like when you heard that? You know, it's so strengthening in the sense of, you know, uh, the music 
or art, the art world in general is always the plight of the artist, and it's it, it can be a very uh, it, it's a very personal road. So with all the help that you might sometimes get, at the end of the day, it comes down to you have to do it yourself. You ha- and that's the same as it is with anybody in anything in life, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but it, you know you got to stick with that. And uh, so when all of a sudden you're still in that independent, and I'm still in that independent struggling stage, right. you're, you get a phone call that says, by the way, the letter's coming out, and and uh, we'd like to uh, congratulate you that you've been nominated, that Ontario, which is about the tenth of the size of a, any given state, I would guess, um, you know, as most things in Canada, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> compared to the U.S., uh, we're just no change. Uh, but, you know, to have that backing of, it's just a whole community, and basically it's like having a whole state behind you saying, hey, man, mm-hmm. out of all the artists that work really, 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 really hard and put their heart and soul into what they do, we recognize you this time, and we would like to give you our support, and, it, you know, and that helps you get more support. It helps more recognition. It, you know, it's invaluable. You can't put a price on it. You work so hard, and and it's great. So, that's yeah, the short answer is it's great. <laughs> the long yeah. answer is the answer. <laughs> Well, I think another great thing that happened for you is that you opened for Alan Jackson at one point, and I just can't even imagine that because I totally love him as well. Was he one of your inspirations when you were growing up? 100%, and it was, again, another one of those strengthening moments where you get the phone call and you're like, I can't believe it. Yeah. I'm about to start saying... Like, the phrase coming out of my mouth is going to be, I'm opening up for Alan Jackson. I actually get goosebumps thinking about it now. Yeah. And this is four <laughs> years later. Um, and he was. He was a great influence. Uh, he was, I mean, I loved Alan Jackson before, and I loved him even more once I knew that I was opening up for him because then I just went into his music. I would listen to it. I would just get as much of his uh, material as I could just in case he – was by chance standing somewhere near the stage and thought, oh, that guy's okay. Maybe he wants to join me for an encore or something. Aww. And, you know, and of course that never happened. But <laughs> I was prepared just in case. I had a couple of seven, eight, nine, ten of his tunes right in my back pocket. But um, anyways, yeah, it was a great, great opportunity. And again, another invaluable experience that I was just speaking about it last night on stage, how – I was planning on working that phrase for six months before that show and six months mm-hmm. after that show. And here we are five years, four and a half years later, and I'm still soaking that phrase. I opened for Alan Jackson because it's cool. <laughs> because right. it is cool. It's neat. <laughs> so, That's it's, you know, and I, yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling. It was a great opportunity. And, again, another invaluable piece of uh stepping stone stuff that you have to fight for and vie for position and hopefully, you know, get your blessings lined up. Yeah, because it's not easy for just any band to open for somebody that's already established like that. So you were definitely on the right road at that time. You know, everybody's story is different. Everybody's story starts at a different time in their life and takes a different way to get there. Mine didn't start when I was 18 or 17 years old. So, you know, if somebody asks me how long it takes, it's like, well, it takes it takes 10-plus years sometimes. Right. Not always, right. but sometimes you got to be prepared for it. But I was prepared right. for it. I mean, I knew when I was – when I was not – when I was telling my parents I wasn't going to be a preacher, <laughs> I knew what uh-huh. I was in for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was in for a you better do it or you better not come home, boy. <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of like that. So, I had I had all kinds of reasons to to fight through my uh my experiences so far to to buy for those little spots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, you, you know, things are not handed to you on a silver platter. 99.9% of the time you have to work for it, and, and you yeah. worked for it and earned it. So that's that's a blessing. That's not a bad feeling to, to work hard at something and to earn every step. Exactly, exactly. It's more rewarding, I believe. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Now, you recently, you recently <laughs> released your latest house. album. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no go ahead. <laughs> Your latest album called One of These Days in 2013 and again blew people away in the music industry as you received more nominations, uh, this time from the CMAO Award nominations and the Independent Country Music Award nominations. So I want to say congratulations to you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you kindly. (laughs) Do you speak (laughs) French? (laughs) Let's put grazie in there too. Let's go. Spanish, Italian. (laughs) Say nada. I know a little bit, but not, not much. So <laughs> don't don't ask for any more. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> that's, I, I don't even know the one you just said. So <laughs> well, <laughs> it means it's nothing. Like you're welcome. Yeah. Um, you recorded this album in London, which I found very interesting. Now, how did that happen, and why did you choose to go there instead of Nashville or somewhere like that? Well, I will. Um, Just clarify that in case it says London and you thought it might have been England, it's actually London, Ontario. Really? See? Yeah, you need to put that out there then. It did sound, yeah, because on ours it's definitely London, London, Ontario. Uh, (laughs) That might have just got missed in translation. Sorry about that. I now said that. That would be awesome and great. And if we want to talk about going to crazy places and recording, I can talk to you about playing recording in Greenland uh, just about four weeks ago. But... Oh, wow. um, one of these days was recorded in London, Ontario, and it, again, I mean, we could have recorded in downtown Toronto. We could have recorded uh, in some of the major studios surrounding the Toronto area where a lot of, you know, bigger artists would go out to. We uh, chose a beautiful studio out in London, Ontario, which was two hours away from the city, and it was just a comfy, beautiful space that... I mean, I've recorded in all kinds of different spaces, and this one, mm-hmm. again, was great for some things and was different for other things, but my like doing my vocals for this latest album felt the easiest yet. So, And I think it had something to do with the kind of space. I had a little more space than the last studio, but not as much space as the studio before. It was just that mm-hmm. comfy one in the middle. So, anyways, and that's the London, Ontario, why we chose to go record there. Not as exciting as London, England, but yeah. anyways. And why we wouldn't go to Nashville is, uh, well, that just wasn't what we were doing at the time. You know, and I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not against going to Nashville. I just haven't got a chance to do that trip yet. Oh, uh, you'll get there. I'm sure of it. Oh, I have no yeah, doubt. I mean, I plan, and then I want to go to London, England, and I want to record there, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, everybody has to go to uh, where the the Beatles recorded their music. What is that, the Abbey? Right. So you got to get there sooner or later. I believe so. And you got to do that walk, you know, like then you know, get some of your bandmates and do that walk across that sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, how would you say this album differs from your first one? Um, well, there's always a little progression. I'd like to think a little bit of a progression further in the, you know, I'm trying to better my voice and trying to better my songwriting and try to better my right hand on the guitar um, because my left hand is useless. Um, Oh, no. But I, I, um, you know, it's, 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 I find it in some ways it's not as raw as the previous album, because the previous album has certain elements that don't sound so modern, which means they sound a little more, I would say a little more of that Canadian rock kind of thing Mm -hmm. mixed with, you know, a a couple, 10 good years added onto it, (laughs) you know, of (laughs) modern technology. Um, But, uh, you know, it it kind of had some of that vibe, which I really enjoyed. Um, little different spaces in between the dynamic, like it's hard to describe, 
But it's just the way mm-hmm. it would punch the speakers, which is different. Not as clean sometimes. It was dirty. We had some distortion. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Almost like that mm-hmm. when you record on tape kind of thing. Mm-hmm. had a little more of that than the new record has a lot more of that real polished, beautiful, oh, my gosh, how can you make it sound that sweet kind of sound? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. those are the sonic things that I really find. And as far as material, I had my whole life to put together running stop signs. And I started putting together one of these days in July of 2011 to be released, to be recorded in 2012 and released in 2013. So I basically started writing the record with, within a year. And that mm-hmm. was my first experience doing that and putting that whole thing together and I was going through so many amazing emotional highs and lows that I really started getting into, I need to reflect my current emotions so much on these records. I need them to be so honest. And that was my kind of first, like, you've got one year. What are you going to talk about? I guess I'm going to talk about me and what's happening in my world and what's happening in my life right now. Like I always do, but, yeah, you yeah. know, when you're looking for ideas, it's like, well, here, this is happening to me. It's got to happen to somebody else. So right. now <laughs> working towards the next record which I'm working on already, they are so, like, even now I'm thinking, you can't wait till this one, we just wait till the next one, because they're so honest, they're so sincere, and I can't wait for you to hear them, because I believe that that will even translate more to the listener, where they're going to say, oh, all right, break the chorus down and let me chant this in the audience. Ah. You know? Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. I love that. When can we expect to see the third album? Sometime next year? Yeah, sometime next year. And, I mean, I, I say that because I just don't know when, but sometime right, next year. Right. But it's exciting. Yeah, well, next year is not that little. far away, so. <laughs> oh, sheesh. It's around the corner. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's Halloween this week. It's Christmas. Now. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I have to say one of my favorite songs from your your new album is Alcohol Abuse because I mean, you have to listen to that music and that song and then watch the video for it and it will tell that whole story right then and there for you because you you imagine things when you're listening to songs um, you know, many different things. People interpret it in different ways. But then when you watch the video for it, it's right there in plain sight. <laughs> I yeah. absolutely love it. It was so funny. Were you part of writing the storyboard for it? So I'll say the, the, the short and skinny of it was it's myself, my drummer, Kevin Birch, and our friend um, Jason, oh, I always call him Alvedas. No, I was, whatever, yeah, Alvedas. Um the three of us, last minute, like we were shooting within a few days, and we just got the script in because we were shooting. It was all last, you know, last minute operation. We were all uh, tight on schedule, and I wasn't happy with the script. I wasn't satisfied with what we, what we had been given, and so I really wanted to make something just more funnier, more just something different. I mean, as cool or as, as creative as we could get with the budget we were working with and with the limited time and not having money to hire people for actors and actresses. And I mean, we just didn't mm-hmm. have budgets for these things, but we needed right. to make up these kind of cool characters or something. And the three of us were sitting around on a Wednesday night before the Friday and the Sunday was the shoot. And we pulled off that whole storyboard line for line, frame by frame, we wrote that out, and we laughed our whole way through it. We're like, he's, she's going to be up on his shoulders. She's going to be swaying back and forth. It's going to be a still shot. It's going to say uh, 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 fuzzy navel, and it's going to be a still shot of her belly button with a belly button yeah. ring. And then we're going to have straight tequila. He'll be another character. Oh, my gosh, who's straight tequila? What does he do? What's he look like? Okay, he's going to be a regular kid wearing a, a sombrero. And yes. he's going to look up at this gorgeous girl, and he's just going to throw tequila in his eyes. And, of course, it's just water. But he's just going to throw tequila in yeah. his eyes because he's so – he's like, whoa, she's that beautiful. Smack. Right. And we <laughs> laughed. The hurricane guy on the big bull, on the yep. mechanical bull, I called him up. He was a friend of mine that was a bouncer at a club, and I'm like, you have to do me one favor if it's the only favor of your life for me. Uh. I need you to go on a mechanical bull in a tank top and fall off. 
And, you know, I think he got bruised up after that. But it was funny, and we laughed the whole day. (laughs) So I'm glad that people find a little bit of enjoyment in it because we worked hard in that few hours that we just threw that idea, and we thought, you know, let's make characters. You know, mug shot, everything. (laughs) Yeah. And it's all – I still have the original papers. I didn't throw them out. I have our scrap papers of the Sharpie marker – List of whiskey sour and bloody mary and oh. ay, ay, ay. I'm telling <laughs> it's one of the best videos I've ever seen for just throwing something together. You really hit the spot on that one. I, I just love it. And for our listeners out there, be sure to go to Marshall Dane's YouTube and, and check that out. Oh my gosh, you will love it. That that was awesome. Now you have to up yourself for the next video, so <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping the next video won't need as much explanation. (laughs) We knew we were going to have to make a video that explained what we were talking about. (laughs) We're not fools. Oh, Uh, my gosh. The next one can be those main ones where I just, you know, sit in the park and play a piano and sing a tune. Yeah. (laughs) And somebody else does the acting. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it'll be good, though. Um, I'm going to tell our listeners as far as, you know, your website and your Twitter and all that and your upcoming gigs that you have in November. But I wanted to ask you one last question before I let you go, and that is what do you love the most about playing music and what do you want it to say to your fans? That's a deep question. (laughs) It is. Because, you know, just thinking about it makes me think of all the wonderful things. I've experienced so many blessings from music. I've seen Greenland because I play guitar. I've seen Mm -hmm. Newfoundland, Labrador, the North Canadian Arctic. I have seen the Northwest Passage, St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I've seen a bunch of America, a whole bunch, if not all, of Canada. Um, I've met so many beautiful people. I've had so many enjoyable nights playing songs and having an audience to listen and to enjoy it back with me and reciprocate as much as I love playing it. They love listening to it and appreciate that. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think it's so much more than just a song. I think it's, it's a message. It's a feeling. It's a, it's a vibe and a style and a way of life that you can, you know, share and express yourself with, you can help and you can, you know, well, you can help is the main thing. I'm sure you can hurt with it too, but uh, I'd rather think that you just want to help people with music. So it's such a, yeah, it's such a great thing. So I love everything about it. You know, I love, I love the challenge that that the business part of it brings because it just makes me delve into more musical things. Yeah. Well, we love that about you, and we love that about your music. And, you know, it to me, music, because I know people out there that are doing it, use it to help with, like, say, music therapy for somebody going through a bad time, somebody in the hospital. It's not just, you know, only making the music to hear it on the radio, have somebody play it on their car, in their car, you know, or throw it in the... I was going to say a, a, a tape on the cassette or something. We don't have those anymore. You can tell how old I am. Uh, <laughs> Throw a CD in there, you know. That's a big part of it, but it's also out there to help people too. Yeah, and like it's just, so. I mean, it, it raises spirits. It's its great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it can all be done, and this is one of my favorite lines from, it's a Neil Young tune. It's called Keep on Rocking in the Free World. And the way I translate that, I don't know what he means by it. But in my world, when I hear that line, I think, I rock in the free world. And that is, I can pick up that guitar, I can go out to the corner here on my street, and I can play music, and it will cost me nothing, and it will cost them nothing, and we will enjoy it. Right. right. Rocking in a free world. So right. that's, that's what I believe music to me. It's a, that kind of thing, man. Yeah. It's too bad yeah. there's sometimes a price that. on it. I love that. I mean, can you imagine a, a a world without music? I just there's no possible way. I can turn off my television set and I can do a lot of other things, you know, turn off other things and just be in silence, but 
eventually I've got to hear the music. I have to listen to it daily, no matter what type it is, because I love all genres of music. So uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't listen. I was just back, I mean, just to finish off that con- uh, idea, is that about maybe three weeks ago I was standing on the edge of Greenland, northern Greenland at about 75 degrees latitude, which is just up near Santa Claus Village. And, <clears throat> well, kidding. Uh, but, um, and it's, it, I was there, at, oh, sorry, it was just when we crossed over the Atlantic Ocean and we were on the tip of uh, uh, Newfoundland, and it's where Vikings had come over at one point. Mm-hmm. Man, these guys didn't have a lot of anything, but they right. had a single tiny bone from a deer or something with one single hole in it at the end. That was it. Blow in one side, comes out the other. Kind of like a, a very, very tiny hummingbird version of a didgeridoo. <laughs> it was yeah. nothing. But they could get about six notes out of that, and they would dance around back whenever that was. They would dance around with just that one tiny little instrument. You know, they don't, no electricity, nothing like that, but you got the instruments. You know, it's early, yeah. it's early back as we go. Yeah, Somebody's definitely. Got Been around forever. I think that is one thing that we were meant to have when God created this earth. <laughs> you know, it just has Amen. to be with us. Well, Amen. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, Marshall. I really, really enjoyed speaking with you, loved hearing your stories, and I look forward to you one day being in Chicago so I can see you live in concert. I can't wait to get there, and it was really my pleasure. Thanks for uh, asking me those questions that make me think of those beautiful parts of the music business. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks again, and you have a wonderful day. Will do. You too now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. And for our listeners, please follow Marshall on Twitter, at Marshall Dane, and check out his website, which is also Marshall Dane. Dot com. I believe, let me, I'm getting back to my notes here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, you got to go back up. You know how one of those things go. Yes, MarshallDane.com, and that's M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L-D-A-N-E. Uh, he has some upcoming gigs in November, and just to mention a few, on November 4th and 11th, he will be at Rock and Docks in Mishawaga, Ontario, November 14th and 15th at Boots and Bourbon Saloon in Toronto, Ontario. Um, Don't forget to check out his YouTube for his videos, especially for alcohol abuse, and like his Facebook page at facebook.com slash Marshall Dane. And I'm going to go ahead and play a couple songs for you, and the first one is going to be Alcohol Abuse. Alcohol Abuse Shameful ways to precious booze. Put a glass here, the chicken wire in front of my face. Jack Daniels was falling like a rain on the face. Then a fight broke down and a bouncer broke a box. Over all that noise, I heard somebody holler.
fuzzy navel, cooking sherry mug, slide margarita, whiskey sour, straight tequila, screwdriver, hurricane, Shirley Temple down the drain. Every drop we lose is alcohol. Band, how's a Miller Light, Bud, Wise, a Newcastle, Harpoon, Lone Star, Blue Moon, Doe, Sticky, M, Stealth, Samuel Adams, Gone to Hell, High Ball, Bloody Mary, Fuzzy Navel, Cooking, Sherry, Mud, Slide, Margarita, Whiskey, Sour, Straight Tequila, Screwdriver, Hurricane, Shirley Temple, Down the Drain, With Every Drop We Lose, It's Alcohol Abuse, Every Drop We Lose, Every Drop We Lose, I think that song would be so much fun live in concert to to watch him sing it and think about the video and and just have a good old time at that concert. Uh, The other song I'll be playing by Marshall Dane is called I'll Be Your Whiskey. When my doorbell rang at 2 a.m., Knew he broke your heart again And I'm getting tired of seeing you cry If it's the jack there in your hand Says you need a drinking friend again But I've got something better this time Baby, come on over here Let me dry your tears I can take your pain away tonight I'll be your whiskey Lay that bottle down and just kiss me If you're looking to forget him completely Baby, I love to be the one who gets you tipsy I'll be your whiskey oh, 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 yeah. Whiskey wears off off the quickest Just a temporary fix And it leaves you feeling worse than before My love doesn't work that way yet My days but it won't fade And you knew that when you walked through my door Baby, come on over here I can make them disappear For tonight and the rest of your life I'll be your Alcohol Abuse, both by Marshall Dane, off his new album called One of These Days. Be sure to pick it up on iTunes or Amazon or wherever you pick up your music. And don't forget to pick up his first album called Running Stop Signs. It's just as awesome as this one is. And we look forward to new music on the third album coming out sometime next year. 
And with that, I'm going to say thank you to everyone who joined me today to listen to the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again to Marshall Jane for joining me. I'll be back on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time with our Music Monday show, which uh, I play just about an hour or so of indie music from around the world. So we'll see you then. Everybody have a great rest of the week and an upcoming weekend. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Get connected with Take Two Radio Music on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio Music. Or for email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadioMusic.com.